Introductions. Very important. If you are going to put together an arrangement of a song, an orchestration of a song, if you will, you're putting together the whole package. And that includes introductions and endings. Think about a painting. And if you go to a museum and you see a painting, very seldom would you see a painting without some type of picture frame. The picture frame is there to help support what's going on in the picture, and it also has to be relevant to what's going on in the painting. So for example, if you looked at a 17th century painting and a 21st century picture frame, that wouldn't make much sense. And likewise, in reverse. Occasionally you run into a painting that has no picture frame, but that's not the norm. Usually you've got something that helps support what's going on in the portrait. Same thing with a piece of music. You can have a piece of music that starts at the beginning and ends at the end and that's it. But then you've got the painting without a picture frame. So the introduction helps support the beginning of the song, sets up what's going to happen in the song, and the ending ultimately also brings it to a close as well. But let's focus on the introductions for right now. Introductions usually come from some part of the song or set up the beginning of the song in such a way that it makes logical sense from introduction into the tune. The most common introduction that you can have is simply playing 5-7 into the introduction. Simple as that. But there are other ways that you can enhance the sound of an introduction. It can be something that's just very glorious, that sets up a really beautiful passage that's about to come across into the song. It can be something that you actually take part of the melody or the harmony or maybe a rhythmic aspect of the song and incorporate that into the introduction so that it's setting up and letting you know what's going to come up into the song itself. I've put together a list of some iconic introductions and some of these are so beautiful and distinctive that they are not necessarily, as I was just saying, from the body of the song itself, but they set up the song so beautifully. And once you've heard one of these iconic introductions, it's tough to hear the song and not hear this introduction being part of the song. So let's look at a few of them. The first one we have here is Take the A Train by Duke Ellington. And this is, oddly enough, not composed by Ellington, but composed by the man who many consider to be his alter ego as of, a, of a composer, Billy Strayhorn. So Take the A Train has this little train sounding introduction here. Listen to this. This is usually done on piano. So to make this happen on guitar, it takes a little bit of effort. <laughs> Cute little intro. I tried to find a Sinatra song, Sinatra being one of the great vocalists of all time, many, many albums, hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of songs, all of them with wonderful arrangements because he could afford to get the best orchestrators that were around. Well, he worked quite a bit with Nelson Riddle, who was a wonderful arranger at that time period, and did a lot of his music. And this is I've Got the World on a String, arranged by Nelson Riddle, and it sets up a beautiful Sinatra tune. This is full orchestra, so what we're doing here is taking the full orchestra introduction and trying to condense it into the guitar, which means you can't, but you try and come as close as you can. <laughs> the world on a string. At Last is a song that was written in the 1940s, but it became most well known when Etta James did it late 1950s, early 1960s, and that's really the iconic version of this song. And this intro just, it goes with the song. Let's see if we can do this again. This is an orchestral version. We're going to try and condense it into the guitar, or get as close as we can. Chuck Berry, my opinion, the king of rock and roll. Johnny B. Good, his most well-known song. So well-known that in the 1970s, when NASA sent out the Voyager spacecraft into deep space, 
with the idea that they could hopefully someday an alien life form would find the spacecraft, they put a gold record with a record player on there. Yes, record. Goes back to the 70s. And on that record, they put Beethoven, they put Bach, they put Indian chant, they put African chant, I believe they put Brahms, and they put Johnny Be Good. <laughs> the idea. And there are so many different ways that you can play that. You can go listen to many versions of this. Some of the favorites that I like, Hendrix playing Hendrix in the West is the album that it came from. He does a wonderful version of Johnny Be Good. Johnny Winter, uh, Johnny Winter Live And is the name of the album. It's a great album and they do a wonderful version of Johnny Be Good. Chuck Berry is of course the original. And you can do this in many keys. And also remember Back to the Future, the movie. That's one of the iconic scenes from that. Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix. I wanted to play the guitar because of Jimi Hendrix. I wanted to play the guitar because of Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix, the first song on the Are You Experienced album. I got so into Purple Haze that I bought purple clothes. I painted my bedroom purple. I had purple drapes. Yes, I was into purple. Now, you can't play Purple Haze on an arch top guitar, but I'll come close. seven sharp nine. And you might as well have two Hendrix. This is one of the greatest intros in rock history, Little Wing by Hendrix. This is just such a beautiful intro and it's based on the chord changes that are in the actual song itself. It's just a wonderful introduction and the way he plays it is just gorgeous. And if you listen to the many different versions that exist of Little Wing, you find that he changes it subtly every time that he plays it. So I'm going to paraphrase a little bit as I'm playing it as well. Five or 624 by Chicago. This introduction leads into the song and this is played throughout most of the song there. So even though it's an introduction, it's actually taken from the body of the song. can't go into a guitar store without hearing this next one. No introduction necessary. How about some R&B intro? Temptations. that everybody knows that song. It's just so much ingrained as part of the song. This last one, It Had To Be You by Harry Connick Jr., I'm not even going to attempt to play. It's not doable on the guitar. What's important about this is that you get this very simple song. It had to be you. It had to be you. With a two feel at the beginning. And the introduction that precedes it 
is particular to this Harry Connick arrangement. I don't want to tell you anything more about that. I want you to listen to it and hear how the introduction relates to the actual song itself. I think you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 